it didn't look like we were going to be able to move like we did. And at the end, people were asking for some big ask, but as the night went on, it got uh, much better, and uh, we were able to make the, the move. And, uh, you know, you always say that this guy was high on the board and all that, but these two kids are solid people, I think. I don't know if you've talked to them. Mm -hmm. Really good people. Mm -hmm. uh, great backgrounds. Tough as nails, both of them. They can make plays. So I think, and we're, they're both two, a two and a three, or two, two wings, let's call them. Uh, that's what we need. We need some young guys, especially to play that position. Both said neither talk to you or talk to the Pistons anyway yeah. in New York. Is, is that a unique situation? Is that something you've in done before? In Chicago. Or in the combine. Chicago, I'm sorry, in the combine. Yeah, so, yeah because, well, first I was with Memphis. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't talk to me. I don't know who Detroit interviewed, but uh, we did background checks on these guys, and we knew how good they are. Uh, Larry Nega, the coach of Miami, and I go way back. He was a grad assistant and he recruited me in my living room okay oh. <laughs> that's how old he is and then uh um and then the kid from creighton is just just solid player uh you know a lot of people had him going much higher and yeah. he felt us but time will tell you know we'll see how uh, in a couple of years if we if we made the good move but we're very happy tonight it's, it's a lot it's more than we thought we were going to get hmm. is it the draft or was deep when it comes to wing positions. So it feels it's, you were able to take advantage of that by getting two good wing prospects pretty much in the middle, middle of the second round that way. Yeah, I, I didn't think they'd be either one would be there. So mm -hmm. we were happy that, you know, we got we feel we got fortunate, but you, you only know down the road. When did the wheels spread. start spinning on getting moving up and getting that third? We were trying all night. And as I said, the deals were really hard. Uh, they were very expensive yesterday. They were very expensive early in the night, and as the day night went on, it got better and better. And uh, you know, uh, you don't want to give up assets, but uh, we feel where we are with the wing situation and getting young guys in here, uh, we did a good job tonight. Well, what of their attributes fits best with your philosophy and, and Coach Casey's philosophy? Playmakers, good kids good people and they play hard these two kids play hard and I think you need it you know you need guys that are go out there be tough and leave everything out there and that's what these two guys are uh, I think you'll be uh, when you see them in summer league you, you'll see what we mean now do they have things they have to work on of course yeah. to get better but they are uh, tough minded uh, and high basketball IQ guys when you mentioned the playmaking aspects of it um, do you feel like either one of them can have point guard capabilities uh, Brown, I think, has a, a little uh, – I think he's a 2-1, I would call him. I'd say uh, the other guy's more 2-ish, uh, you know, but they're both wings first. When you're building depth with the roster in today's game, is the wings kind of where you want to – if you have the opportunity to, to, to stack up as much as possible? Yeah, well, wings are the hardest probably to find. Uh, in today's game, you need playmakers, and uh, we got two playmakers, and as I said, there's things they got to work on, and that's what they'll do. But uh, – very high character uh, people. I know you got the whole off season to, to add to the roster, but when you look at a depth chart right now, Stanley Johnson's really the only natural small forward you can play with yeah. Richie there. Is, is Brown a candidate to maybe get some minutes He there? could play some three. He's, he's strong enough. The kid mm -hmm. is uh, very strong, so mm -hmm. that's one of the big things. So, yeah, could he play a few minutes back there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, but I don't know if either one, you know, uh, uh, it, they are going to have to show they're good enough mm -hmm. to get into the depth of play this year. Right. You know? right. Coach Casey has talked about the, the need to shoot more threes. Yeah. Right. Are these guys more than capable three point shooters? They're, uh, they're I would say Thomas right now shows more three point range than Brown. Mm -hmm. They're both going to have to work on it. Uh, that adjustment going from the college to the three point mm -hmm. line, um, even though it's a few feet, it's 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 a big adjustment. So uh, we're going to get right on that right away. You are a veteran front office guy. I worked for a lot of different teams. Um, is there like an adrenaline? that comes over you or anything like that on well, draft night? Like when, when the yeah, phone's moving? When you have a first round pick, there's a lot more adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it got, it got exciting when uh, it started to come together because I, it looked like we weren't going to be able to do anything. It looks like the guys were coming off the board and, uh, and then it got exciting for us. So yeah, it's always, it's great. I mean, uh, the uh, scouts and the front office did a terrific job. They worked really hard. They identified the right players in my mind. So the credit goes to those guys in there. We just got fortunate on the phones tonight.